Hello guys and welcome back! Or, if you don't know me, hi! My name is Sorin and today I will show you how to make a simple but very useful voltmeter with 5.5mm connectors. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, which is a professional printed circuit board manufacturer with over 14 years of experience in making high quality PCBs at affordable prices. Please visit their website at jlcpcb.com to check what products and services they offer. You just need to upload the Gerber file and order high quality PCBs for your project starting at $2. Let's get back to my voltmeter slash ammeter. What is it useful for? Well, you can very easily measure the power consumption of any device that uses the very common 5.5mm connector. It will be very useful for future projects. Let me show you how I built it. These are all the components I need. This is a very common digital voltmeter, but I'm not gonna use it. I will use this one instead. But what's the difference? They look the same. The top one has two decimal places instead of one, so a better accuracy. If we look in the back, we can see that the one I'm using has three thick wires. All the other models have two thick wires. But you can use this model too, which is also very precise and much easier to find. I hired some new help for this project, but it's just temporary. I'm cat sitting this orange beast for some friends. He seems to be very interested in my components and very helpful, as you can see. I will dismantle this panel voltmeter because I don't need the plastic case. It takes too much space. But there is a small problem with these LED displays. They are not very visible in daylight. In reality it's actually worse than how it appears on camera. All you can see is 888. So, as I did in other videos, I will use a piece of this semi-transparent plastic folder to cover the display. The digits are much more visible this way. To make this fix permanent, I will use two parts adhesive, which is semi-transparent, and glue the plastic cover on the LED display. After one hour, the glue is dry and the display looks much better. I need a lithium-ion cell for this project. I got this one from an old mobile phone battery, but I don't remember the brand. Anyway, I need to test it first, so I connected it to my Opus charger and give it a few cycles of charging and discharging with 300 milliamps. And you can see that after more than 10 years, this lithium cell still has a very good capacity. So it's probably from an old Nokia phone. To charge the lithium cell, I will use a TP4056 module with protection. But there's a catch. The default charging current is 1 amp, which is too high for my 800 mAh lithium cell. Also, with 1 amp, the TP4056 IC and the lithium cell will get very hot, and I don't want any components to heat up inside this small box. But we can lower the charging current if we change the R3 resistor according to this formula. The initial value is 1.2 kilo ohms. So, if I want a charging current of maximum 360 milliamps, I will replace it with a 3.3 kilo ohms resistor. I want to test it before installing all the components inside the box. So, let's charge this lithium cell and measure the current. 0.36 amps. Yeah, that's nice. I'll install all the components in this small plastic box. But first I have to remove the standoffs. This is a job for my rubbish unpowered Dremel. I will use this milling drill bit which is very hungry for plastic. Of course you always need protective goggles when working with power tools. Even underpowered tools. That's a good job, I should have become a dentist. I'm sure my bedside manners would have been very good. I need to measure carefully where the display will be mounted. The interior of the box will be crowded. To make the rectangular hole I will use this small circular saw blade. You need a lot of patience and a steady hand for this type of cutting, if you want it to look decent. Next I will use a cutter to straighten the edges. Let's see if it fits. I need a round hole for the input connector. 
that's easy to make. And I have a few more cutouts to make. One for the micro USB charging port, two small holes on the side for the charging LEDs, and the square hole for the on-off switch. I will stick the charging module in position with strong double-sided foam tape. The tiny LEDs are aligned with the two holes, but let's test them. Yeah, they are visible. This is the smallest on-off switch I found for this project. I already soldered two wires to it, insulated them with shrinking tubes and cut the unused switch pins. I will use super glue gel to fix it in position, it needs around 20 minutes to fully dry. These thin flexible wires are for the battery. If you want to see the schematic, the link is in the video description. Or you can hit pause right now. And I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see more DIY videos and updates about my future projects, you can check out my Patreon page. These pins are too long, if I bend them there isn't enough space left for the battery, so they need to be cut. Now I can mount the voltmeter display to the plastic case, I will stick it with hot glue on the upper side. The hot glue is flexible for the next minute, so I can move the LED display in the correct position. Then I can stick the bottom side of the display with super glue gel. To increase the battery voltage I will use this step up converter. But where is it? There it is, it's tiny, so it's perfect for this project. Let's solder some wires to it. The output of the step up converter goes to the supply wires for the voltmeter. Let's test what I soldered so far. This 5.5mm connector is used for the output. It's rated at 5 amps, I just need to solder the wires to the ammeter thick pins. For the input I will use this female connector, which is also rated at 5 amps. Let's tighten the nut and solder the wires. The output connector wires will be glued to the plastic case, so that I don't accidentally pull them out. I will also put hot glue on the soldering joints to insulate them. The cutouts look pretty good. It's finally time to install the battery, I will fix it to the back panel with sticky foam tape. And even though there are a few millimeters between the battery and the rest of the components, I've insulated the interior side of the battery with electrical tape. Don't worry about the battery heating up, I soldered the wires to the nickel strips, not directly to the lithium cell. The battery terminals also need to be insulated with shrinking tubes and electrical tape. I made 4 holes for ventilation in the back panel, even though nothing should get hot inside this box. I just need to close the back panel and it's finished. And now let's test it. I will use it to measure the charging voltage and current for my powerful power bank. When I connect the charger you can see the battery voltage rising while it's being charged with 2 amps. Let's say you want to build a new PS for your modem or router. First you need to measure the current consumption, which will be very easy to do now. It will take the ONT 1 minute to sync and now the maximum used current is 280 milliamps. When it's time to charge it, just plug in a micro USB charger. And when the charging is completed, the blue LED turns on. But how long will the battery last? We can find out with some boring calculations. This type of voltmeter needs maximum 11.8 milliamps at 5 volts. Let's say 12 milliamps. That means a power consumption of 0.06 watts. The lithium cell has an energy of 2.95 watt hours. Let's say that the step up converter works with an efficiency of around 90%. This will give my voltmeter slash ammeter 44 hours of battery time. That's pretty good for a 10 years old battery. But what about the accuracy? Well, it's not perfect with an error here of 10 mV, but that's pretty good for a cheap digital voltmeter. You can also calibrate it with the two potentiometers in the back. The volt ammeter can measure maximum 100 volts DC and 10 amps, 
but the 5.5mm connectors I'm using are rated at 5 amps. But for short periods of time it can measure higher currents until the connectors get hot. So this is my homemade small and simple voltmeter slash ammeter with 5.5mm connectors. If you enjoyed this video share it, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. Bye!